Adam, welcome back. Hello, Tony. It's so good to be here with you and Phil in the studio. I want to talk about all those parents that you're helping and giving them direction and teaching them on how to help their children begin financial planning. The most essential thing that people really need to be able to survive today is not taught in school. Mm -hmm. So it's up to parents to teach their kids. Mm -hmm. And and how can we teach them? One of the struggles, and a lot of people know the rules, the struggle is is, is time and consistency for parents. Mm -hmm. You know, is actually putting it into place. Giving your kids a predictable allowance. And I would start young, certainly, you know, five years old, give them whatever it might be, a dollar a week, you know, $2 a week. For myself, I found at a certain point, it was easier to create a bank account for my children and actually create a little transfer every week. And I would show the child the statement mm -hmm. because I was so busy, I couldn't remember on Saturday mornings always to give them their pocket money, but I really wanted it to be a steady thing, okay? Mm -hmm. The next thing is to teach children that money doesn't grow on trees, which sounds such a cliche, but there are so many people, I think, in society at large who have no real idea about where money comes from, which is so strange to me, but ultimately money comes from work. It comes from people working. The child needs to equate that when they want candy in the store, that someone's working for that money. Either they're working for it or their parent is working for it. Personally, I think at least some of their allowance should be tied to some kind of odd jobs or maybe some extra allowance to odd jobs, but really try and get it into your child at an early age. The importance of working in order to get that money. I love that because <laughs> I started working really young. I mean, I had a paper route at like age eight and you get real clear on, on the value of money. So did your parents so go the next step with you, Phil, and Which encourage is? you to save some of that money? That save. is where they drop the ball. <laughs> right. So I got a little tip for that okay. on how your parents could do that and maybe encourage you to save, you know, to have two buckets. One is your candy bucket and one is your, <laughs> is your savings yes. bucket. Well, I'm going to give you an extra and kind of make it exciting for the kid. You've got to make mm -hmm. saving exciting. If they save... Uh, Ten dollars over the course of a month. You say, "I'm going to give you an extra dollar." You know, you're going to get a dollar's interest on that ten dollars. I love that. Month. That's great. <laughs> and then the next month after that, again, they'll get it compounded, not just on the ten dollars, but on the eleven dollars, and show them how that works. That is so smart. One of my other favorite things is this entrepreneurial ability. Encouraging your kids to do a real job at a young age, and even better, to be an entrepreneur. You know, yeah. be it do the lemonade stand, and keep going with that lemonade stand. Don't just do it when they're eight years old. Keep going. Right. Mm -hmm. I find that many of the successful business people I know, you know, Warren Buffett says there's only one correlation with being a highly successful entrepreneur. It's nothing to do with your academic ability or sporting ability. It's how young were you when you started being an entrepreneur? 